Now that we've taken a little bit of time to talk about what Scratch is, let's actually look at Scratch. Uh, and if you'd like, you can just watch this video, or if you'd prefer, you can sort of play along. Um, and, and we're just going to kind of look at what Scratch is as a toolkit in this. So open up a browser of your choice. Uh, I'm using Chrome. And we're going to type in scratch.mit.edu. And we're going to bring up the Scratch website. Right. And, but now before we dig into this, let's let's actually talk about a few things about the Scratch website because while most people will think about Scratch just as the programming environment, there's actually quite a bit of stuff going on here. Uh, and I think it's worth drawing your attention for just a minute because I think most people speed by it very quickly to this section here in, in the middle to the bottom part of the screen which is updated frequently and so I'm recording this uh, several weeks before you're actually going to be watching this video, what you're going to see is going to be very different than what I see probably. Um, but, but, but the idea is the same. What Scratch does, you remember I talked in the last video, is one of its main goals is to allow materials to be shared with people. Uh, and for you to view other people's Scratch projects. And so these are some featured projects, some projects that the, that the creators of Scratch, the maintainers of Scratch, have decided were particularly fun for, for one reason or another. Um, and so a, a new project gets featured every day or so, uh, and so these will these rotate through over time. Um, so I'm just going to click on this. I haven't really had a long chance of looking at this this but what we go now is a, is a really simple project that some other creator uh, that some user called Oraquack has created a do-it-yourself gobo plush program and and to run this program I can either press right in the middle of the the video the not the video, the screen, or press this green flag, which is the go. Uh, that's the standard way we start things in Scratch. I can click on this. We've got the music we're going to have to deal with uh, in here. But they've got a little program. This is step one. I drew GoPro on a piece of paper. It's not advancing or doing anything, so I'm going to click on it. Oh, sure enough, when I click on it, we go to step two. I refined the line to the black mark. And so evidently, stop it because the music is going to make it hard for you to hear but evidently they've created a little sort of animated set of instructions on how to create their own little plushy gobo uh, gobo is one of the characters you'll come to recognize as being sort of standard in scratch um, that, that, that users that students can can program to do things and so they've created this program um, there's an ability here for people to, to write some comments about this video or not this video this program sorry um, and Suppose you're looking at this and you say, that's really cool. How did they do that? You can look up here in the corner. It says See Inside. And I can click on this See Inside link. And now I'm looking at the actual code that, 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 that this user created this video with, this game. Um, I, I, it's not, it's, it's, their program is like a video, which is why I keep calling it a video. Um, but it really is a program, and, and I can look at what they did, and I can see how did they, they hook things up. Um, and so as, as we go along, that's going to become helpful for you to be able to look at what other people have done with their programs. Um, let's look at another one here. Um, this was a really simple one. This is nothing more than, a, than an animation, but I actually like that it's featured because we're going to start our uh, course by looking at, at really basic animations in Scratch. And so right, this is just a simple little animation. It's kind of nice. It's pretty. It's well done. Something that a student has created. Um, and, and you look at that and say, wow, that's really cool. How'd they do that? And it turns out that this is nothing more than just a few blocks of code. And we're going to talk about this exact code in just a few minutes, uh, just a few lessons. But again, one of the things I like about Scratch is that they're always featuring new and unique ideas here. And so kids who start to get bored with Scratch can play with this. Hello, everybody. I'm glad to be here today. Okay. Not very fancy graphics here. Wow. Rough crowd. But somebody's created a really neat little story with some with some speech to text, um, and and again, your students can can explore these projects and can uh, come up with new ideas for their own projects. Can say, "Wow, that's cool! How did that person do that?" And by clicking on the see inside link, know exactly what's going on. 
Uh, it's worth pointing out real quick before I go on here that this is curated fairly heavily. Um, and so I always get teachers who are a little concerned what happens if students come into violence? What happens if they, they find programs about drug use or sex or something? You're, you're very, very unlikely to find that in Scratch. Scratch is monitored. Those kinds of projects are removed from Scratch when they're discovered. And anything here on the front page has been carefully vetted. And so you shouldn't ever have any problems with kids coming into inappropriate material. OK, now that I've given all that, let's actually look at Scratch. And what we want to look up here at the top is the Create tab. So I'm going to click on Create. We're going to load Scratch. And when it comes up by default the very first time, yours is probably going to do the same thing. You're going to get a little tutorial pop up here that talks about how to get started with Scratch. You might want to watch that later. You might want to use that with your students. I'm actually going to just close that now and kind of give you that information myself. Um, when we open up the creation portion of Scratch, the actual programming portion of Scratch, you'll see about four different regions, four or five different regions that we are going to be interacting with as we program with Scratch. The first I want to draw your, your attention to is the upper right hand corner here. This is called the stage and this is where the actual Scratch program runs and executes. And so as you're creating your program, what when we saw the little uh, animation of the girl whose hair was blowing in the wind and the sun and the wind, this is where that program uh, is running while you're creating the program. Okay, And again, this is called the stage. And it's called the stage because Scratch uses a metaphor, and I really heavily use this metaphor, of the idea that when you are a programmer in Scratch, you are the director of a movie, of a TV show, of a play. And so you are giving a series of sprites, your actors, directions on how to perform properly. Right? And so in this particular default play, when you create a brand new program from Scratch, in Scratch, every time you do so, you get one actor, this this scratchy cat who's on the screen in the center of the stage. Right. So here's the stage. Here is where all of my actors are stored. We'll we'll look into this very very quickly, but I can hire more actors than just scratchy cat. Um, and so scratchy cat uh, and and the other actors are here. <clears throat> Over on the left hand side now is absolutely everything I can ask my actor, my scratchy cat sprite, everything I can ask him to do. <clears throat> and you'll notice that as I scroll down here, it's in a set of color coded uh, sub areas. And so at the top, we start with the motion options. They're all this kind of bluish color. And then I can either scroll down to get to the purple looks menus, or I could just have clicked over here on the side and say, hey, jump to the looks menu, jump to the sounds menu, this hot pink menu, the events menu, the yellow, the control blocks in orange. Set, right? And you can go through all of the materials either by scrolling through this or by by clicking to jump to it. And again, remember I, I talked in the previous vid video about recognition versus recall. You don't have to remember the exact wording on a specific command. You just have to remember, hey, I had a, a block that that controlled the movement of my cat movement is all in this darker blue menu. Let me see if I can find it. Oh, that must have been the change X block. Right? And so you just saw me do this. I can take menu, I can take commands from the menu and I can drag them out. And this area in the middle is where I write my programs. Or again, in the metaphor that I'm going to use, it's where I write my scripts. And so I can write a script. This is change X by 10, think hum for a few minutes, um, ask you know a particular question, do some particular things. This is where I write my story. I'm actually going to stop right now and we're going to talk about how to write stories together in the next video. But that's the overview I want to give you of Scratch. The stage in the upper right hand corner, the actor or sprite control area in the bottom right hand corner, the list of all the commands that you can give 
the sprites, the actors, on the left edge, and then the middle of the screen is where you write your programs or you write your, write your scripts. And that's what we'll pick up with in our next video.